Welcome back to the class on a power semiconductor phase. In this class, we are going to discuss about static rotor resistance control of fan. The meaning of static is that by means of a power electronic switching device, we are going to control the rotor resistance. That's why we are calling it a static rotor resistance control of fan. Now we are going to see the circuit diagram for this one. Static rotor resistance speed control. These are three lines where the three phase supply is available. Here the induction motor is represented with the two circuits. For the first circuit, nothing but stator. For this stator, we have given a three phase supply. So whenever we are given a three phase supply to stator winding, there is a rotating flux will be created. There is a rate of change of flux linkage with the rotor conductors. The voltage will be induced in a rotor conductor, which is driving a current to the rotor box. So whenever current carrying conductor plays in magnetic field, it experiences a force. So the rotor also will be rotating in the same direction of a stator flux, that is a synchronous speed. See here, there is some amount of power is generated in a rotor. Because always there is a relative speed existing between the stator flux and the rotor. So what are the power is generated in the rotor, that were corrected by means of a separate that is given to the diode rectifier circuit. The power which is available in the rotor is the AC power that we are going to convert it into the DC. The DC power we are giving to the external resistance that is A and B. The resistance between these two terminals we are going to control by means of a, this BZT. Suppose if the BZT is on, simply making short across the resistance, so the resistance of AB becomes a zero. Suppose if the BZT is off, then the resistance between the A and B is the R. By controlling the duty cycle of the BZT, we can control the, the resistance between 0 to the R. So in that manner, we are smoothly controlling the resistance, which is added into the rotor. This inductor is placed to have a triple free diode card. So here, here we are going to find out the how much is the effective resistance which is added into the rotor. So this is the source current wave from nothing but the current which is available at this point. During the 180 degrees, the source current is consisting of only the 140 degrees only. So if you find the RMS value for this source current, then IR equal to root 2 by 3 ID, where ID is nothing but a DC link current. The average resistance between the terminals A and B becomes a REAB equal to 1 minus delta into B, where delta is nothing but a duty sign. The power consumed by the resistance REAB is equal to that we denoted with the PAB that is equal to ID square into REAB. In place of R, we substitute this equation, nothing but a ID square R into 1 minus delta. This is the total power consumed by the this resistance with respect to the DC. Now we are going to find out the how much is power is consumed by the each phase. So this power divided by the three because it is a three phase induction motor. So one more point here is that in place of ID from this equation, we substitute in terms of IR. So finally you are getting the 0 0.5 into R into one minus delta IR scale. The rotor resistance per phase is increased by 0 0.5 R 1 minus delta. This quantity is nothing but a resistance. The total rotor resistance per phase will now be, suppose the rotor resistance per phase is RR. This is the added resistance because of this circuit. Where delta is nothing but a duty cycle of this BZT. This is the total resistance per phase now be, that is RRT equal to RR plus. 0 0.5 R into 1 minus delta. Suppose if the delta value is 0, then the maximum resistance is RR plus 0 0.5 R. Suppose if the delta is 1, then this quantity becomes a 0, or the effective resistance becomes a RR. So we can say very easily that by changing the delta, we can vary the resistance from RR to 0 0.5 R. Now we are going to see the closed loop control of the static rotor resistance. Here the same circuit we have taken. This is the three phase supply which is given to the stator winding. This is the rotor. The rotor power is converted into the DC power by means of diode rectifier circuit that is given to the 
external resistance. Across the external resistance, we targeted a one BZT. For the duty segment of BZT, we are going to control so that we are going to control how much resistance we are added into the total circuit. Case reactance. The main function of this case reactance is uh, to make the triple three DC link. If we observe this closed loop block diagram, this is the reference speed. This is speed sensor. Generally, we are taking the tagometer. By means of tagometer, we are measuring how much speed it is rotating. That we are comparing with the reference speed. So the error in speed which is given to the speed controller. Suppose if the error in speed is more, then the speed controller will, will make the current limiter to saturate. The value of the saturation current is equal to the ID where the maximum torque is developed next to So if we select the current limiter such a way that the transient operation of the induction motor will be is very fast. So the error in the speed which is given the current limiter, this current limiter will be set in the reference DC link current. Now the actual DC current will be measured here. Error in the current will be given to the current controller. This current controller will be processing the error in the current, which is giving a signal to the driver circuit so that the corresponding base voltage will be applied to the BJT so that it makes how much resistance is added to the rotor circuit. This method we can apply only for the slippering induction motor. We can't apply for the spiral case induction motor because it does not have any provision to trap the rotor point. Suppose here, if we take some value of the reference speed, the actual speed is less than the reference speed, then the error in the speed becomes a positive. So this current limiter will be saturated. Once the current limiter is saturated, it will be setting a maximum value. Once it is setting a maximum value, it will be processed under the current limiter so that the driver circuit will apply the base voltage to the BJT such a way that the DC link current is equal to the reference DC link current. So the maximum torque will be generated, the motor will be accelerated, the error in the speed will be decreased, then the current limiter will be set to the reference DC link current such a way that the actual torque developed in induction motor is the same as the low torque. Moreover, the speed of the motor also is equal to the pressure. In that manner, this block diagram will be operating the how much speed we require from the induction motor drive. A 440 volt 50 hz star connected wounded induction motor has the following parameter scatter resistance equal to 0 0.5 volts. Rotor resistance referred to the scatter is 0 0.4 ohm. Scatter reactance and the rotor re reactance referred to the scatter is 1.2 ohm. Magnetization reactance is 50 ohm. Scatter to rotor ratio is 3.5. The motor is controlled by static rotor resistance control. The external resistance is chosen such a way that the breakdown torque is produced at a standstill for a duty ratio of zero. Calculate the value of external resistance. How the duty ratio should be varied with the speed so that an acceleration at a maximum torque. We know the expression of the slip at a maximum torque that is equal to RR dash by square root of RS square plus XS plus XR dash whole speed. Suppose if we add external resistance into the rotor circuit by means of a static rotor resistance method. Now that value we are referring to the stator. So with the external resistance, whose stator referred equivalent value is RE. Now this expression will be modified as a RE plus RR dash by square root of RS square plus XS plus XR dash whole square. RE equal to 2.45 the slip at a maximum torque minus 0 0.3. We know that the external resistance into the rotor circuit by means of a rotor resistance speed control that is equal to 0 0.5 into 1 minus delta into ESK. Where here is nothing but a scatter to rotor ratio substituting the values of all the above equation, we are getting the 6.125 into 1 minus delta into R. Here R is there. Now we have to equate this expression with a, this expression. We are getting the 
that is 6.125 into 1 minus delta into r equal to 2.45 sm minus 0 0.2. The maximum torque constant at a starting, so the slip at a maximum torque becomes this value becomes and delta value is 0. That is also given in the numerical. So substitute those values in this expression. We are getting the 6.125 r equal to 2.45 into 1 minus 0.4. So R value becomes a 0.33474. Now substitute the value of R and SM. In this expression, if we substitute SM equal to NS minus N by NS, already we calculated the value of R. That value also substitute in this expression. Now we are getting the delta equal to 1.195 into delta power minus 6 N. This is the expression for the duty cycle during the acceleration index motor. So from the above equation suggested that for accelerating the motor speed at a maximum torque, delta must change linearly with the speed. So thank you very much. If you have any doubt, you can ask me directly or you can ask me in the comment box or something. So that I'm always available to answer all your questions.